looks like maybe I'm back up. Um, areas specifically about five different bills inside the K through 12 budget where um, I started to examine it. So one of the first things I want to uh, or go back to is from our last task force meeting where we heard from Dr. Um, Lindsay and the thing that stood out to me was he said there's two words that you can kind of come to the front of your mind when we're talking about critical theory, critical race theory, and that is equity and privilege. And I'm going to focus on that equity definition just for a minute. This was in the Childhood Development Grant at the national level, the position statement on advancing equity in early childhood education. They defined equity as that it's a state that would be achieved if individuals fared the same way in society, regardless of race, gender, class, language, disability, or any other social or cultural characteristic. And they say equity is not the same as equality, but it's more distributing resources equitably, not equally, to meet needs. And this was one of the um, slides that was sent to me from a concerned um, parent, and I thought it captured the definition well of where equity is more about equal outcomes versus equality of equal opportunity. Um, they had in their definition of privilege there, again, this was for the childhood grant, privilege is unearned advantages that result from being a member of a society preferred or dominant social identity group because it is deeply embedded Privilege is often invisible to those who experience it without ongoing self-reflection. And privilege is the opposite of marginalization or oppression that results from racism and other forms of bias. So those are the two words that I tried to key in on. All right, let's go ahead and... The, the first, when the first K through 12 budget came up regarding um, the teacher's division, a, I had an um, anonymous teacher's assistant send me these pictures of bulletin boards talking about explorers wanted, not necessarily in a positive light, um, kind of negative connotations to the explorers. The, the thing that alarmed me was up um, on the right-hand side of the picture, you can see you have the students writing, and then in the red pen on the top right, you could say, it says, oh, alive, so we can kill him ourselves. So that was an interesting um, perspective that um, a teacher had, had sent me. So I kept digging. You can go ahead and hit the next slide for me. And these are a little bit of an eye chart. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the actual website specifically. And if we just let's get out of here. Okay, so we have EL Education. And they um, are in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. You can kind of scroll down. And you can see the, the link up at the top. And they, it's important to, for the committee to know that Black Lives Matter, um, last, last fall they filed as a political action committee. And they raised over, I think it was a million dollars in four months and supported 14 political campaigns across the United States. Um, so you see that as well. And it talks about anti-racist um, stuff there. It quotes Ibram Kendi, who you're familiar with his work. If you'll go to the next tab to the right. So they have a specific curriculum. You can close out of that, that they provide to schools. No, the la it looks like it got closed. But um, the curriculum specifically that I was going to show you there, there's going to be copies in your handout as well. But they're looking at the, the um, some of the concerns of um, um, racial concerns inside Peter Pan, and it lists out all the different um, curriculum through K through 12 that they encourage and recommend. And then here you have their EL education partners. And you can see actually listed as partners are four different elementary schools in Idaho. You can scroll down a little bit more. So you can see that we have across the state some who are um, who have bought this curriculum for our elementary schools. All right. So then you can go back to the PowerPoint for me, please. 
So some of the other things I started to get from um, local Idaho schools I'm here, a school locally uh, pushing. It was a social justice week. You can see a lot of equity, um, gun laws, and um, the the Marxist fist. Um, several examples there. That was also from an Idaho school. Next slide, please. Okay. At one of the, um, we we'll go back to the internet. At one of the local schools in Idaho, we had a teacher present a video. I'll just do a few seconds. You can review it as well. All skin colors are as good as each other. That's why we should be treated the same. But for far too long, black people have suffered. So all around the world we're saying that must change don't be afraid you have a choice speak up use your voice say that's not fair it's not okay it's not right for you to be that way black white whatever you color listen learn love each other make some noise say together All right, then the next thing, so going back to the EL education, since we knew we had some schools in the area, in the state, who are using that curriculum, I, I wanted to know more about the curriculum and see what other states. So I put in a public records request to the, the Boise School District, and you have a copy of that in your handout. And one of the requests... Um, it's separate. It's probably at the very bottom page. One of the requests was for this EL education material, the curriculum books or assignments used in K through 12 classrooms for teacher trainings in the Boise School District this last year. Um, the Boise School District, um, they indicated in the response that it says Boise School District has EL specific curriculum taught at five elementary schools one junior high and three high schools. And it said for the EL specific curriculum, 5,935 pages of records are available for your review as explained above. They had talked about how um, according to Idaho Code 74102, I could examine materials, books, and curriculum resources. So several from the task force, some other concerned um, members in the community were available. We went down to the Boise School District and um, here is what they provided. Um, this is an English learners curriculum. Um, it is a National Geographic series um, published in 2011. And I asked specifically if they were going to provide me with what I asked for the EL education specific curriculum. And they said no. So um, I am just currently coordinating um, with the Attorney General's office to, to see kind of what the next step is there as well. All right, so we also had a lot of um, input from parents across the state. So if you will please reference uh, your big packet here. There's a copy on your desk. It's the stuff we received from people across the state. For those of you listening online, um, this is available to the public. If you type in on your computer, um, growingfreedomidaho.com forward slash k12 you can the public can see a copy of this and that's growingfreedomidaho.com forward slash k12 takes a minute for it to load there's a lot here i just want to quickly flip through it with the task force here where we have the boise school district just uh, did a posted a job description for a building equity lead position we have at Boise School District, Hillsdale Junior High, they're beginning a new novel stamp called Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism, and You. 
You can see that was a newly approved novel. There's several pages about that. There's what the teacher highlighted on dis discussing, discussing that specific um, book. Gets into several um, of the teacher's actual curriculum, looking at the 1619 project, comparing it, but then putting notes um, for the students to talk about um, the racist ideas of climate theory and Aristotle, the significance of August 1619. You can see that as well. I'll keep flipping through. We have students required to do implicit bias test and response at 11th grade English class at Bora High School. Several billboard pictures on there as well, um, supporting um, BLM and Marxism in a third grade class at West Junior High School. We get into the Idaho standards for initial certification of professional school personnel. So that's get put out by the Idaho State Board of Education. Um, half a dozen or so references to um, social justice and advocacy. Those are underlined for you. Then you can see the EL education, and it's in detail there about how their support for um, Black Lives Matter. And then the curriculum there also, where it talks about the exploring the racial and gender stereotypes in Peter Pan, so a little more detail of that in the packet as well. Okay, then we have at West Ada School District, where they talk about uh, culturally responsive classroom and social climate. And there again, you have that picture I just showed you up on the wall, equality versus equity, and the importance of teaching equity. And um, there's some, some good content here where it talks about the, the problem with um, the graphic on the left, so equality. Yeah, let's see. It says, in the graphic, some people need more support to see over the fence because they're shorter, an issue in, inherent to the people themselves. Also consider here where the female POC and male are located. That's fine if we're talking about height, but this is a metaphor for other inequities. This image implies that students in low-income communities and other special populations need more resources because they are inherently less academically capable. They or their families or their communities are metaphorically shorter and need more support. This is not why the so-called achievement gap exists. It should actually be termed the opportunity gap because the problem is not in the abilities of students, but in the disparate opportunities they are afforded. We must help teachers understand that all means all when we're talking about special populations. That's a good one reference. I should have put page numbers on this for you, but you can see the pictures of the equality versus equity. Um, let's see, we have at Meridian Middle School a post um, about culturally prevalent teaching saying color blindness is a myth, and one that denies our students validation of their whole person, and we start getting into AVID curriculum. I'll just take you back to my public records request where we also requested material relating to AVID. It's a special program being used um, in the Boise School District. When we asked for that material, um, the, the school district responded that in Idaho code it states that trade secrets may not be disclosed under the public records law and therefore that this program AVID needs to maintain its secrecy and as a trade secret so they did not provide any of the AVID material. You could see, though, we did get some of the AVID material that is being used um, through other sources. And about halfway through, you've got a really dark page here. It's AVID, their solidarity with Black Lives Matter and all of their position statements there. Um, some of their resources recommended by AVA, how to be an anti-racist educator, how to root out anti-black racism, a whole long list of um, recommended books and curriculum regarding that. Um, an article about white privilege, unpacking the invisible knapsack. We can't afford whitewashed social emotional learning, another article. How do I make sure I'm not raising the next Amy Cooper article and a companion article, How to Not Raise a Racist White Kid? There again, this is all AVID material. 
I have several there. Okay, then we get into the cultural relevance section towards the end. Um, there's a really good eye chart of, of AVID towards the back that shows Idaho specific, how many schools AVID is currently being used at. They say they've, uh, this is actually a little bit of old. So this was the 2018, 2019 school year. We have 19 years they've been in Idaho school districts at 47 AVID sites, 36 secondary schools and 11 elementary schools. They think they've hit back in 19, 8,000 students with AVID. So that's a good snapshot of some of that um, trade secret material. Let's see, AVID there. Okay, one of the other AVID uh, teaching approaches, you'll see towards, there again, I'm towards the end of the packet, but it talks about the privilege walk and the importance of that. So the unconscious privilege, there's that word again. And the see, privilege walk is a very powerful activity connected to privilege and the advantages and opportunities that it offers to individuals, races, or cultural groups. And it talks all about how to do the, the, the privilege walk as well. Um, they taught what an extension project, consider using a different example of privilege. Um, really good, there's, let's see, there's about 44 different privilege walk activity statements on whether or not if you relate to the statement, you take a step forward. If you don't relate to the statement, you take a step backward. And then at the end of all of the questions, you see which kid in the class is more privileged than others. And then there's the whole debrief on how to do that. There's also uh, 20 things that I can do to be a more equitable educator. Uh, one of them, I will reject the myth of colorblindness. I will recognize my own social identity group and memberships. I will acknowledge my role as a social activist. I will fight for equity for all underrepresented or disenfranchised students. Equity is not a game of choice. If I am to advocate education equity, I do not have the luxury of choosing who does or does not have access to it. For example, I cannot effectively fight for racial equity while I fail to confront gender equity, and I can never be a real advocate for gender equity if I choose to duck the responsibility of ensuring equity for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning students. That was number 19 end of your packet, okay. And then a couple of the pictures there in your packet as well. And there is an article, I wanted to include the equity framework. We all received a copy of that last year and I think one of the presenters is going to talk about that. Again, this can be found for the public, members of the public, growingfreedomidaho.com forward slash K12. That's a wrap up of what I have um, been shared during this last legislative session. Thank you, committee. Representative Giddings, would you please restate where we find this online? Website. I want me to pull it up. I can. Um, it's growingfreedomidaho.com forward slash K12. Growingfreedomidaho.com. Forward slash K12. Is there a hyphen in there? No. Okay. You can see it up at the top of the screen there, maybe. Just spelled out, growingfreedomidaho.com forward slash K12. Okay. Thank you very much for that information. Representative Giddings, are you willing to take questions? Absolutely. I just went over my time, okay. I know. So. Well, we, uh, I'd like to welcome any committee members to, if they have questions on the research that was done by Representative Giddings, just remember to light up your microphone so I know that you have a question and direct all your questions through the chair. Any questions? Uh, Isaac, go ahead. Madam Chair, um, who, who controls this particular website and is uploading documents? Representative Giddings. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair and um, Mr. Moffat. So um, I don't control, I, I just asked someone to put it on. This is a, a website that I just had it uploaded an hour ago. It was trying to um, find a place where it could be uploaded. Um, I, I don't have control. It's just a public forum um, as far as that goes. It's not my website or anything like that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Laura. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, good job. Um, did you have a list of all the um, schools throughout Idaho that are using the SAVID? Or is it the ones you cited, just the Boise area? Representative Giddings. Madam Chair and um, Ms. Van Horhees, I do not have a compiled okay. list of who's okay. using AVID. There was just, that was from 2019, okay. and you could see that capture where it said there's that many, but I, it's a trade secret, I think. I'll look into it. Thank you. Any further questions? Professor Yenner. All right, there we go, sorry. Um, are, are decisions to adopt these kind of curricula made at the state board level or the school district or the school level? Representative Giddings. Thank you, Madam Chair and Professor Yenner. I think we will have an answer to that question by the end of today, but I am not the person to go into depth on that. Any other questions for Representative Giddings? Okay, thank you.